Well, thank you for joining us again today for another weekly webisode. I'm here with Pastor Jeff. God bless you, Miriam. And hey. we're about to unpack the message from Sunday services. Amen. The message was brought this Sunday by our senior pastor, Adam Jaffa, and the topic was the principles of first fruits. And that's just one of the topics we're doing in the series on Amen. finances. Pastor Jeff. Finances. Glory to God. So Pastor Adam brought what I, I, I believe is a very, very encouraging message. And um, he started off before he got into the actual teaching, and I think is very relevant about training up a child in the ways of the Lord. And if you train up a child, shall not depart. Now that also applies to adults. Mm. That also applies to anybody who's trained in God. So what we're looking at is first fruits, and not just the first fruits, but first of the first fruits. So we're going to start off with basically the principles of first fruits. So basically, God needs to be first mm -hmm. in everything, Miriam. Do yeah. you agree with that? Absolutely. So putting God first is actually a lifestyle. And it comes out of Matthew 6.33 where it says, Seek first the kingdom of God hmm. and his righteousness, and then all else shall be added unto you. So how do we do this? Um, you know, putting God first can only come from revelation. You, you need a revelation of who God is and how amazing he is. And if you come to this conclusion that I've come to, which I've come to the conclusion, Miriam, that I can't survive without God. Because mm. right yeah. now, I'm drinking his water, I'm breathing his air, I'm living on his planet. And he says that the earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness and all of those that dwell therein. So every single thing that exists belongs to God and he's just an amazing landlord because he yeah. doesn't charge us anything. Mm. He just wants us to honour him, love him, and spend eternity with him. Yeah. So it's not hard to think, well, hey, I've got to put God first because this is my take, this is my conclusion. Without God, I can't survive. Mm. So I think it's really good that we put God first. Yeah. What's your take on that? What's your thoughts on, on putting God first in everything you do? Yeah, I like what you said, without, without God, I can't survive. Amen. Like, where existing because we know there's people in the world that the world that we live in that don't serve God or have other Amen. gods and and yeah we're just existing we're not living because the bible talks about God giving us life and more life more abundantly and um in terms of putting him first you know i often think about how people come to salvation wanting to add Jesus or wanting to add God or Christianity yep. to their pre-existing gods already. Yep. Sports, money, yep. um, you know, Allah, all sorts of gods, and they want to add Jesus. Yeah. But you can't even just put him first in front of all those things. That's right. It's an absolute yep. replacement, isn't it? Yep. Hmm. So when you think of um, the first of first fruits, Jesus, in many, many different ways, was the first mm. of the first fruits. Yeah. What do I mean by that? He was the first of the resurrection. Mm -hmm. He was the first to be born of a virgin woman. Yeah. He was the first, wow, God to be sacrificed on a cross. And there are many, many, many first fruits that Jesus has given us as an example. And um, without understanding who he is, without understanding that we must put him first. And e.g., um, if we look at redemption, mm. where God has redeemed us, you know, and in the book of Exodus, it tells us quite clearly to consecrate ourselves for all is mine. And he goes on to say both man and beast and then he gives a clear example when he spoke to Moses. And he said, go and tell Pharaoh, go and tell Pharaoh, Israel is my son. Let him go. Let them go. 
All right, and when you think about God, he actually is a redeeming God. He, he redeems everything. And he's an amazing God because he just says, I want you to recognize who I am, and then I want you to treat me as God. And this is what God has spoken to my heart. If I am God, then let me be God. Why would God say to me, if I am God? Because he's only God if I make him God. Right. And he's only first if I put him first. Mm -hmm. And all of the, everything we're talking about can only come from revelation. You can't just slap a man on the back and say, listen, put God first. It's got to be a heart thing. And um, so that leads us into our second point. So our first point being the principles of first fruit. Our second point is who is first, Miriam? Hmm. Who is question. first? And um, I don't mean this derogatorily, but I, I honestly believe that we live in the most self-centered generation that there's ever been. Are you, you experiencing that in your walk? Yeah. And there's so much opportunity for us to think that's okay. You know, we're told by media. Yeah. Um, we're told by the news. We're told by television. Like this, you know, you deserve this. Yeah. Put yourself first. Um, make yourself look good. Yeah. Make yourself the best of the best. You know, so we actually can compete for that spot, which is really sad because you can never, you know, com by comparing yourself with each others, yep. you can never become the best because you. The only way you're going to be the best is you're competing against yourself. That's right. You, know? like That's you can right. only ever be the best you there is. Um, so, Pastor Jeff, can I ask a question? Mm. As a like a like a new person to coming to hear about this, what does that look like to be for to say the first of the first or the first fruit or what would you tell me if I said, okay, how do I do that? I really want to, but what does that look like in terms of my finance or in terms of for me, Miriam, it's really simple. I've I've come to this conclusion where I was raised a Muslim and for me that didn't work and then I became an atheist and when I found out how much God loves me and the price that he paid for me and on top of that I've, I've come to this conclusion and, and I can't exist. I, I can't exist without God. He is my existence. He, he upholds the entire universe. and. Um, when you look at, you know, what actually belongs to God? Well, he said the earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness and all of those that dwell therein. So he, when, when you come to the conclusion that everything we see is God's, like we look outside and, you know, the sky is blue, the birds are singing, the trees are green, the grass is growing, and we go, oh, yeah, well, that's just, no, that's, that's, that's all God. Mm. Everything we see points to God. Yeah. And, you know, how do those trees grow? Why does the grass, why is the grass green? You know, and there is so much around us that is witnessing that everything belongs to God. And when we say everything, including our type. Right. And Pastor Adam made it very, very clear that before he does anything else, he gets his wage, the first thing he does is pay his tithe. Well, I want to take that to a next level because today is um, our banking day every Tuesday. And every Tuesday, I put in my tithe before I get paid. Hmm. So that is well and truly first fruits. And I, I've just trained myself that way that my tithe belongs to the Lord. And then I, I give an, an offering. And what I'm doing is, is not allowing money to control me but I control it mm. and I heard I heard a farmer once say that he said I give God the first fruit and I take my shovel and shovel into his barn that that belongs to him but then God takes his shovel and shovels into my barn what belongs to me and God's shovel is a lot bigger than my shovel. Mm. And that's the way that it works where, you know, while yet soon as Christ died for us, Jesus redeemed us and he's, he wants us to just put him first, put him first. Yeah. 
And I, I think that's a fair thing, but for a newcomer to actually understand all that, I think first they must understand how much God loves them. Mm, okay. How much, you know, God, the price that he paid was just amazing. So that leads us into our third point, which is it's all about attitude. Mm. You know, um, the world out there says, get a life. True. Wow. Get a life. Get an attitude. Guess what? They got it right. Yeah. Because if we've got the right attitude, we actually get that life that God wants us to have, and that's eternal life. And Miri, when we think of the value, what value do you put on your eternal life? True. You think about that. Mm. It, it's so valuable that we actually can't put a value on it. Yeah. And for me, I, I just I just find it so easy to put God first because He's God. I'm man. Yeah. He's everything. I'm nothing. But when God gets a hold of nothing, He makes that nothing something. Yeah. So attitude, you know, and um, Pastor Adam talked about how when you're in the right place, you know, God actually said to Solomon, um, Solomon started really well, but didn't finish so well. But mm. there was a point where Solomon was just putting God first, you know, and, and when, when he became king, they were supposed to sacrifice a bull. He actually sacrificed a thousand bulls. Mm. And what was he saying by that? He was just saying, God, I, I just, I'm just not happy with just giving you one bull. I want to give you two and three. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing <clears throat> feat. But Solomon's heart was really in the right place because God actually said to Solomon, ask me for anything. Yeah. Anything. And Solomon could have said, oh, God, I want this, I want that. But he said, Lord, give me the wisdom to lead your people. Mm. And God said, because you didn't ask for yourself, I'm going to give you that wisdom to lead my people, and then I'm going to bless your socks off. And yeah. Solomon was really the, the wealthiest man in the world. Mm. And not that it's got to do with wealth. It's got to do with having that hard attitude that says, yeah. God, you're first. You're first. And I guess we can wrap this up and, and bring it to a bit of a close by saying, Miriam, store your riches in glory. Mm. What's your what's your thoughts on storing everything that you've got in glory? What does that look like to you? For me, it comes back to what you're saying about revelation. You yeah. know, getting a revelation of the Word of God um, in all areas. You know, like for example, one of like my motto in life is love God, value people enjoy life amen because that then is if you love god yeah your desire is to not obey god alone just to tick the boxes yep. but to have a relationship with god have a so conversation good. with the holy yep. spirit be obedient because like if i know you and i'm talking to you and i appreciate you and you ask me to do something I'm going to say, yep, yeah, sure, I yep. can if it's, if it's yep. in my power. So in the same way as we're doing that with God, it's not a task then to be obedient. It's not about obedience. It's about pleasing God by doing what he asks you to do. Sure. Um, and those things then, that conversation and following his instructions becomes valuable, you know, because you love them. You love God. Yep. And so then people are on God's heart. So you start to value people. And then enjoy life, you know. So storing up um, treasures in heaven or storing up in the right places for me is about that obedience and sharing the word of God and putting God first, not just in finances or it, like decision making. You know, a lot yeah. of people say, I'll ask something and that's I'll just ask my husband about it or I'll check in with this or I'll check in with the boss and see if we can, yeah. you know, if they value that, yeah. if that and want to do that in unity, how much more with God? How many times Amen. do we make decisions without God even asking him? Without, oh, I'll just check in, I'll pray about it, you know? So it's about having the right person, God, yep. in the right place first, and then the overflow is out of that. Yep. You know, like. 
So I'm just listening to your heart here and, and I'm, I'm just going to make a comment because I believe it's it's A, true, mm. and, and B, worthy of being made. And that is, I think you love God more than you love your own life. Thanks. And see if, I you, try, yeah. if you come to that revelation that you, he is existence and, and we can't exist without him and Without him, we can't have eternal life. Mm. And it's it's fitting that we actually love God more than we love our own lives. Mm. Because without God, we've got nothing. With God, we've got everything. Yeah. I have this thing that I live by also. If God doesn't give it, I don't want it. And so sometimes there's stuff that comes across the table or opportunities or things mm. and, and it looks yeah. like what I want and I bring it before God and I'm like, okay, is this it? Is this what, can I go here? Can I do that? Yep. And if, it, if he says no, sometimes it's really hard to give those things up or pass by that opportunity. Look, but I, the fact is if God doesn't, if it's not from God, I don't want it. I, I actually, like, I, I'm smiling because I had a good friend of mine Recently, and I, I did share it in church where he just made me aware of this amazing job offer. Mm. And, and, and he said, look, you know, he said they're, they're paying really well. And, and, and I said to him, I said, the difference between you and I is you go to work. I go to God. Mm. And see, my, my calling is who I am. It's what I do. Yeah. Wages. They don't even come into it, mm. you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking here, like, what is of real value? Yeah. What is of real value? What we're talking about is of real value, you know, where we can just put God first in everything. Yeah. And, and it, the dividends of doing that is amazing. So we, we're going to wrap it up there and saying. We pray that you get a hold of this revelation of putting God first because it will totally, totally transform your life completely mm. and uh, you will be blessed, body, soul and spirit. You'll be blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the country. And this is a real blessing. This is not prosperity doctrine stuff. This is where God wants us, Mary. Yeah. Blessed to be a blessing. Absolutely. So God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.